What up, fellow Glip Globs? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 celebrities who appeared on Rick and Morty. We're Tammy's parents, Pat and Donna Guterman. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're focusing on the various notable guest stars that have graced Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland's hit animated series over the course of its first three seasons. Whether known for voice acting, live action, or even music, these celebrities are the cream of the crop. And away we go. No, we disagree, because you think you're getting a selfie and leaving. Am I getting a selfie? Never. Then I'm never leaving. Exactly. Number 10, John Oliver. Donald Trump is America's back mole. It, it may have seemed harmless a year ago, but now that it's gotten frighteningly bigger, it is no longer wise to ignore it. One of the series' first guest stars, John Oliver brought his sly wittiness to his appearance as Dr. Xenon Bloom, the bacterial chief engineer of Anatomy Park. Hey, Bloom, it's Rick. What the hell's going on here? I don't know why, but the entire security system has shut down, and I'm afraid the exhibits are unlocked. Acting in a John Hammond slash Walt Disney type capacity, Oliver brings forth many typical megalomaniacal traits, such as over explaining the various goings on, as well as stating the obvious at almost every perilous turn. With an excellent sense of comedic timing, the former Daily Show writer and current Last Week Tonight host proved to be a heavy hitter early in Rick and Morty's guest roster. It's just a shame that Dr. Bloom had to willingly sacrifice himself, ending the chance for any further appearances from the wacky mogul. Wait, there is an autopilot. Wait! Okay, never mind, I wanted to sacrifice myself anyway! Number 9, Keegan-Michael Key and Jordan Peele. Rick and Morty fans were treated to not just one, but both the vocal talents of the legendary comedic duo Key and Peele in the season two premiere. But you say a bitch though. Hmm? You said bitch. Yeah. Appearing more than halfway into the episode, Keegan-Michael Key brings the hilarity immediately with a loud-mouthed and confrontational tone, much like his many aggressive characters from Mad TV and Key and Peele. How you think you gonna move time while you're standing in it, you dumbass three-dimensional monkey-ass dummies? And although Jordan Peele only shows up in the episode's post credit sequence, the pair plays off of each other with their trademark banter fitting right into their assigned roles as time-jumping testicle monsters with severe patience issues. You know how much time has passed the dinosaurs? Half of all time! Come on, man, it's this way. Come on, give me that thing. Speed it up. You can't be this far back. There he is, there he is, there he is, there he is. Stop, stop. So that's the guy, huh? Yeah, that's him. Number eight, Christina Hendricks. On a more serious note, Christina Hendricks's guest spot on Rick and Morty was a deviation from the bevy of comedic actors to have appeared on the show. Hopefully if you follow my lead, you can avoid some of the mistakes I've made here. Hello, John. Like that one. She plays Unity, an alien entity capable of assimilating entire populations, who was also Rick's one-time girlfriend. You're a whole planet now, huh? After we broke up, I spent some time wandering through space. Hendrix expertly voices a character that's both emotionally complex and able to explore the more psychological angles employed by Rick and Morty as a work of genuine science fiction. But I know how it goes with us. I lose who I am and become part of you. Because in a strange way, you're better at what I do without even trying. Although short on the funny side, this Mad Men star's sweet and charming approach to such a layered character is a great example that proves that this show is not just toilet humor. Number 7, Jermaine Clement. You turn to me and say something sexy like, is that it? I know what you're trying to say, girl. You're trying to say, oh yeah, that's it. The musical humor of Flight of the Concords and Rick and Morty is a match that is almost too good to be true. And viewers were treated to one half of the musical duo, with Jermaine Clement's turn as the unfortunately named Fart in the season two episode, Morty Night Run. Oh, good job, Morty. You, you, you killed my best customer, but you saved a mind-reading fart. I like this name, Fart. Evoking the silliness of his Concords character, including deadpan humor bordering on the ignorant. Fart's inadvertently evil character is brought to hilarious life via Clement's fantastic monotonous voice. Are you going on a quest to find he who smelt it? I came here accidentally through a wormhole located in what you call Get Out of My Head Fart, I Know You're In Here, La 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 La. Topping it all off, Fart's top-notch song, Goodbye Moon Men, a ridiculous Bowie-esque psychedelic masterpiece, has made him one of the most iconic characters in the series. Goodbye. Is that 
Number six, Stephen Colbert. If anyone could prove to be Rick's celebrity equal, Stephen Colbert would be a top candidate. Mr. Trump, your presidency, I love your presidency. I call it disgrace the nation. Appearing in the episode, The Ricks Must Be Crazy, Colbert plays Rick's microverse alter ego, Zeep Zamflorp, whose callous nature and pomposity give Rick a run for his money. Rick the alien. Rick the alien. Really? You're gonna pull that move? Colbert successfully mirrors creator Justin Roiland's vocal approach to Rick only upping the sarcasm and eliminating the burp-inflected dialogue while replicating famous lines said by Rick in earlier episodes. Eek, Barbara Durkle, somebody's gonna get laid in college. Regardless, the excellent use of the intellectual current host of The Late Show is a welcomed addition to Rick and Morty's ever-growing cast of reputable and memorable guest stars. Peace among worlds, Rick. Number five, Keith David. One of the only returning guest stars in the series, Keith David has actually played two roles. Who's that? While he provided a campy and fun devil's advocate type character in Reverse Giraffe, a fake memory parasite. You know me, I'm Reverse Giraffe. I have a short neck and leg. It's David's portrayal of the President of the United States that's earned the character actor much acclaim. Change of plan, people. Get me Pharrell, Randy Newman, Billy Corgan, and The Dream. The Dream? He wrote Umbrella and Single Ladies? With a no-nonsense attitude masking only the slightest insecurities, David provides a perfect vocal characterization of what the POTUS of the Rick and Morty verse would probably be like. What the hell are you doing, Nathan? I'm the goddamn President of the United States! With over 250 acting credits to his name, including classic Hollywood movies, as well as video game franchises like Mass Effect and Halo, Keith David is one of Rick and Morty's most treasured talents. You're a terrorist, you're an enemy of the state, and you kicked me in the balls ten minutes ago! Number 4. Christian Slater the down-to-earth and likable voice of Christian Slater hit it big time as one of the mythical vindicators in Rick and Morty's third season parody of the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. It's Maximus, renegade star soldier! Sorry I'm late. It was happy hour. Cast as the Peter Quill-inspired Vance Maximus, the easily triggered and fair-weather space hero features some dynamic voice work from the veteran teen star turned Hollywood and television icon. Everyone in the universe is a hero. All you have to do is know the difference between good and bad and root for good. Although Slater's stint as Maximus was short-lived, as the character is hilariously killed off fairly quickly in the episode. The actor's perfect mix of cocky attitude and outright panic make Vance Maximus a hilarious example of Rick and Morty's disdain for mainstream heroes. I need space. I need space from this! Number three, Susan Sarandon. I want the last thing you see in this world to be a face of love. Considering she's an Oscar-winning guest, the series creators brought out the big guns in providing Susan Sarandon with a dynamite script and a quirky character that's both endearing and hilariously out of place when dealing with the anomalous Smith family. Smith family, I'm Dr. Wong. Come on in. In the popular Pickle Rick episode, Sarandon, voicing Dr. Wong, racist name, by the way, has the misfortune of seeing the dysfunctional Smiths through family therapy. Does Grandpa turn himself into a pickle a lot? While conversing with Rick, who happens to be in pickle form for the entire episode, Sarandon's deadpan and serious flow in such a ridiculous situation make the inclusion of the A-list actress all the more hilarious. Rick, the only connection between your unquestionable intelligence and the sickness destroying your family is that everyone in your family, you included, use intelligence to justify sickness. Number two, Nathan Fillion. One of the leaders in cult television acting, Nathan Fillion is no stranger to goofy characters and voice acting. Now let's say I wanted to move a work order for a bulletin board from the bottom of the queue to the top. Now how can I do that when I'm dealing with his easily recognizable voice was the perfect surprise for fans when he appeared in the series Surprise Season 3 premiere on April Fool's Day 2017. Man, I told the money bugs. I said, you know who this guy is, right? You want me to get intel out of the smartest mammal in the galaxy, you better give me a decent brain analyzer. Starring as Cornvelius Daniel, a Galactic Federation agent sent into Rick's mind to obtain the mad scientist's portal gun formula, 
Fillion does an excellent job of going from cocky to panicked in the blink of an eye once the tables have turned on him. It's a trap! Abort! I'm still in his shonies! Repeat! We never left his shonies! The beloved actor gains extra points for doing a spot-on impersonation of Rick, burps and all, once his brain has been taken over by his conniving rival. Congratulations, Agent. You'll be highly commended for this. Always wait for permission to uh. feel accomplishment. That's my motto. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I am Masha, ruler of Gazorpazorp. I am here if you need to talk. This microscope reveals things beyond comprehension. <laughs> no, 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 no. Jacob is your mother's lover. <laughs> I watch them, sometimes from a chair and sometimes from a closet. Almost always dressed as Superman. Number one, Danny Trejo. In one of the most iconic episodes from the third season of Rick and Morty, the Pickle Rick episode yielded one of the series' most badass and memorable guest characters in Jaguar, the incarcerated criminal who only wants his daughter back. She lives, Jaguar. Where is this Pickle? Voiced by legendary action movie star Danny Trejo, mostly in grunts and growled kitschy action movie catchphrases, Jaguar maintains an air of ridiculous, over-the-top traits akin to almost every gung-ho action vehicle from the 1980s and onward. I never bullshit, Pickle Man! This can only end with one of us dead! The only thing we hope for in the coming Rick and Morty seasons is more random appearances from this incredible assassin. Wait, do I have infinite daughters? Huh? Uh, no! No, nope, sorry about that, nope, just me. Yeesh. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.